In our previous video, we dealt with surfaces and ridges of the tooth. In this video, we will be dealing with how to divide these surfaces into thirds and how to name them. Watch the video till the end to understand it well. Hi, we at Dentodize welcome you all to a platform where we help you to conceptualize, visualize and memorize dentistry. There can be three approaches as to how to divide the surface of the tooth into thirds. These are incisor cervically or occlusor cervically, labiolingually or buccolingually and mesiodistally. These basically represent the direction along which we have to move while dividing a tooth. Let's look at our first approach that is the incisor cervical approach. The term incisor cervically gives us two impressions. Number one. The term inciso implies that we are dealing only with the incisors and canines. If you are not clear with this concept, please do check out our video on surfaces and ridges of the tooth. The link is given in the description box below. Number 2. Incisor cervically also implies that you have to start from the incisal ridge and then move in a cervical direction. Now let's see how we divide a crown and the root into thirds. First of all, as shown in the figure, divide the crown into three equal parts. The one third which is near to the incisal ridge of the tooth is called as the incisal third. The another one third which is there in the middle of the crown is called as the middle third. The next one third which is near to the cervical line of the crown is called as the cervical third. To recall, cervical line is a line which joins the crown and the root and is also called as the cemento enamel junction. Likewise, Divide the root into three equal parts as shown in the figure. The one third near to the cervical line of the tooth is called as the cervical third. The next one third in the middle of the root is called as the middle third. And the next one third near the apex of the root is called as the apical third. Likewise, occlusal cervically implies that number one, since occlusal surface is present only in premolars and molars, so we are dealing with these teeth only. Number two, you have to start from the occlusal surface and then move down cervically towards the root. So, as shown in the figure, on dividing the crown into three equal parts, the one third near to the occlusal surface of the tooth is called as the occlusal third. The one third in the middle of the crown is called as the middle third and the one third which is near to the cervical line is called as the cervical third. On dividing the root into three equal parts as shown in the figure, the one third near the cervical line is called as the cervical third. The one third in the middle of the root is called as the middle third and the one third near the apex of the root is called as the apical third. Now let's look at our second approach that is the labiolingual approach. Number one, labiolingually implies labio means labial surface and labial surface is used in context with incisors and canines only. Number two, it also means that you have to start from the labial surface and then divide the crown as you are moving lingually. So as shown in the figure divide the surface of the tooth into three equal parts. The one third which is near to the labial surface is called as the labial third. The one third in the middle of the crown is called as the middle third. And the one third which is towards the lingual surface is called as the lingual third. In the same manner, if we divide the tooth buccolingually, number one, bucco implies buccal surface and buccal surface is used in context with premolars and molars. Number two, Buccolingually implies that you have to start from the buccal surface and move towards the lingual surface as you are dividing the tooth. Therefore, as shown in the figure, divide the crown into three equal parts. The one third near to the buccal surface of the crown is called as the buccal third. The one third in the middle of the crown is called as the middle third. And one third near the lingual surface of the crown is called as the lingual third. Now let's look at our third approach that is the mesodistal approach. As the name implies start from the mesial aspect and divide the crown as you move distally. Therefore divide the crown as shown in the figure. The one third towards the mesial aspect is called as the mesial third. The one third in the middle is called as the middle third. And one third towards the distal aspect is called as the distal third. So it was all about division of tooth into thirds. Thank you for watching. Hit the like icon if you are liking our content. 
share so that we can reach out to maximum people subscribe and hit the bell icon so that you can get notified whenever we come up with any new video suggestions are always welcome from your side stay tuned stay safe